Good evening students. Today we will discuss the topic esophagoscopy. Now esophagoscopy as you all know is divided into two types. It is one is uh, rigid esophagoscopy, the other one is flexible esophagoscopy. Now how do you differentiate between the two? Now rigid esophagoscopy from this you can see rigid esophagoscopy can be done under general anesthesia whereas flexible can be done under local anesthesia. So you can understand that hence flexible, uh, uh, flexible esophagoscopy is an outpatient procedure, OPD procedure. Okay. Now, rigid esophagoscopy is better in which cases or in which cases do we go for? One is foreign body removal. Now supposing you have a meat bone stuck in the esophagus. So you will use rigid esophagoscope and not a flexible esophagoscope. Then cricopharyngeal examination. And the third one is if you want to use a laser. Now, these things cannot be done with flexible esophagoscope. Then, there are some traumatic complications in rigid esophagoscope. Like, you can, uh, there might be some tears while you push the uh, rigid esophagoscope. Then, there could be perforation of the esophagoscope, uh, esophagus. Okay, these complications are very rare in flexible esophagoscopy. Now, as this is done under local anesthesia and it is quite flexible in nature, so any patient with cervical problems can undergo this procedure that is flexible esophagoscopy but not rigid esophagoscopy because it is done under general anesthesia and a proper uh, head move, uh, cervical uh, uh, Proper uh, cer uh, cervical spine uh, integrity should be there for rigid esophagoscopy. Now, what are the indications of esophagoscopy? So, as we see here, I have divided it into diagnostic and therapeutic. Now, diagnostic, I have again divided into symptoms, signs and disease. Now, what are the symptoms in which you would go for esophagoscopy? Number one and the most important one is any patient with dysphagia or difficulty in swallowing. Number two is odynophagia that is pain during swallowing. Number three lump sensation. Now if a patient complains that there is something he feels that there is something stuck in his throat that is there is a lump sensation in his throat then you can go for esophagoscopy. Then a case of hematemesis that is vomiting out of blood. Then gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, this patient will present to you with complaint of regurgitation. You could suspect that it is a case of GERD and hence go for esophagoscopy. Then, signs. Like if a patient comes to you and you found out that there is, there is a vocal cord palsy, then of course you should go for uh, esophagoscopy. Number three is diseases. If there is a neck node, if a patient comes to you with a neck node and you could not find out the primary, this is one, a neck node with an unknown primary. Number two is pan endoscopy is done in case of, in cases of neck nodes in the head and neck region. Okay, uh, sorry, yeah, neck nodes in the head and neck region. If you found, even if you found out a cause in the supposing larynx, Okay, or nasopharynx. You should always go to check for esophagoscopy to look out for any second primary. One primary you have already caught. This is for second primary. So these are the uh, conditions in which we go for esophagoscopy. These were the diagnostic conditions. Now we move on to therapeutic conditions. Like with esophagoscopy, you can relieve the patient. In which cases? Foreign body. Now. If there is a foreign body in the esophagus like denture okay, or meat bone, so you need to remove that and you do it with rigid esophagoscopy. Next is dilatation of the strictures. Okay. And number three is sclerotherapy in esophageal varices. So these were the indications of esophagoscopy.